Let's take a look at how the Windows bootloader transfers control to the kernel. But before that, I want to take a quick overview of the early boot phases of Windows. And for this, I have here a nice article from the Microsoft Docs. It talks about troubleshooting the Windows boot problems. And specifically, they have a nice summary over here of how Windows boots. We can see our differentiation between BIOS and UEFI. Now in this video, I'm gonna focus specifically on UEFI, but just a quick word about the difference between these. BIOS is the classic way to boot a personal computer, and it dates back to the 1980s. And as a result, it has a lot of legacy. For example, the first bootstrap code, it has to be written in 16-bit assembly code, and it has to be squeezed into 512 bytes. This is called the MBR, or Master Boot Record. Now, UEFI does good without all this legacy, and it's more modern than that. So in the case of UEFI, the firmware already understands how to open files from a file system, and it can just load the bootloader as a file from the disk. Now, there's a good chance that if you have a modern computer, you already use UEFI with your operating system, and there's a good chance that even though your computer has UEFI firmware, it still supports the BIOS protocol, and this is called legacy in a lot of cases. We can see the first phase here is called preboot, and in the case of UEFI, it's just the firmware itself. And then comes in the Windows Boot Manager, and this is just an EFI file from the disk. Afterwards, the Boot Manager loads the Windows OS loader, and this is the actual Windows boot loader we're going to talk about in this video, and this is called WinLoad. And again, in the case of EFI, it's WinLoad.EFI. Afterwards, finally, the kernel is loaded, and this is called EntosKernel.exe. Over here we have a nice diagram. This is a graphical diagram of what I just explained. So you turn on the computer, computer goes through a post, that's a power on self-test, and the UEFI firmware starts, eventually launches the Windows Boot Manager. From the Boot Manager we get to the bootloader, that's winload.efi. This will load the kernel into memory and finally launch the kernel. Now in order to see this in practice, I'm going to use here VirtualBox, and I have here a Windows 11 virtual machine. We're going to change a couple of stuff in the settings over here. First off, I'm going to go here to System, and I'm going to disable Secure Boot. This will help me change the boot settings without any problems. Afterwards, let's go here to Serial Ports. I'm going to enable port 1, connect it to a host pipe on my host machine. Uncheck this box. Now we need to give a path for this pipe. So let's call it Windows 11 Debug. And I'm going to copy this, because later I'm going to connect to this using WinDBG. That's how we're going to debug the bootloader. Finally, let's press here OK. And let's start this virtual machine. Okay, over here I'm going to press Win key and then R. Start here the run dialog. And I'm going to type in WT. That's going to be Windows Terminal. Afterwards, I'm not going to just press Enter. I'm going to press Control shift enter And this will start with Administrator Rights. I'm going to start by disabling BitLocker, because it also kind of bothers us when it comes to changing boot settings. For this, I'm going to use Manage BD. BD stands for bootlogger drive encryption, minus protectors. Then I'm going to use here a question mark. We'll see the different options. I'm going to use this example over here to disable it on the C drive. Okay, nice. Now I'm going to configure the boot debugging settings. For this, I'm going to use the BCD edit command. BCD stands for boot configuration database. So we're going to change a bunch of parameters related to the boot. Specifically, I'm going to use the boot debug parameter, and I'm going to turn it on. Afterwards, one more thing. I'm going to change again for with BCD edit. This time's the DBG settings. Let's see the available options. And specifically, I want to use the serial debugging method. It's going to be indeed in port 1, and the baud rate is going to be indeed this one. So I'm just going to copy this example over here and this will configure everything I need. Now we can finally restart the computer. So I'm gonna use here shutdown, slash R to reboot, slash T. Time is gonna be zero. Reboot immediately. Now in the meantime, I'm gonna open up here Windows Debugger, WinDBG. Now I'm gonna go here to File, select here Attach to Kernel, in the baud rate, I'm going to put 115200 as we configured. And the port is going to be as we copied. Windows 11 debug. Break on connection. Now let's press here OK. And we can see we successfully connected to WinLoad, the Windows bootloader. 
I'm gonna start by pressing here go, G, because it's gonna connect again. I wanna catch the next connection. Okay, nice, now we're connected again. And I'm gonna put a breakpoint on the function I wanna break on. And this is gonna be, of course, from WinLoad. This is called OSL. OSL stands for OS Loader. Afterwards, arch, transfer to kernel. And I'm gonna use the G command to go until we hit this breakpoint. Okay, nice, now we arrived at this function. And to make our life easy, I'm gonna open here the disassembly view. And now we can see and scroll through the disassembly of this function. Now we can see here that it starts by saving the first and second arguments to this function. In the Microsoft x64 calling convention, rcx is the first argument, rdx is the second one. So you can see here that it saves it aside to r12 and r13. Afterwards, you can see that this function does a bunch of stuff that prepares the transition to the kernel. Now let's take a look at what are these first parameters. What are the parameters of this function? Because we can't see them here clearly. So I'm going to copy the name of this function. And we're going to go to the React OS source code. Now, as you can see here, I have the React OS repository open here. And if you don't know, React OS is a free Windows compatible operating system. So it's a great resource for information regarding the internals of Windows. And we can use this to help us understand what exactly is this function and how, how the parameters look like. So here in the search, I'm just going to paste the function name. Let's search it. And let's go here, for example. We can see already the parameters here. First one is the loader parameter block. And second one is the kernel entry point. So we know that the second parameter is the address of the entry point of the kernel. That is very useful. But let's take a look at the loader parameter block structure. So let's copy this name over here. Now let's just save aside the name of this structure over here so we'll have it later. So I'm going to use for this the dot echo command. And this will just save it here aside so we can access this later. Now since this structure comes from the NT kernel itself and the kernel is not loaded yet, technically the kernel is loaded into memory already. It's just that WinDVG doesn't know of the existence of it yet. We can see that the kernel is not loaded by using the LM command. This is loaded modules. We can see the only thing that is loaded is winload. So what we want to do is we want to fake the kernel loaded in memory. So we can access this structure and take a look at the register of RCX as this structure. This can help us examine what's inside. So I'm going to fake the Windows kernel as if it's loaded right after winload. Then of course we're going to unload it and put it in the real address in memory. So I'm going to copy here the end address of winload. This is where it ends in memory. And we're going to use here dot reload. Slash F is going to be force. Afterwards, we're going to say that NTOS kernel dot exe. Remember, this is the file of the kernel. We're going to say that it's loaded here in this address right after winload. OK, and after this is done, we can run here LM again. And now WinDVG thinks that NT is loaded right after winload. And now finally we have access to this structure. So we can tell WinDBG DT, display type. And I'm gonna take this from NT. NT is the name of the kernel, as you can see over here. Then we're gonna copy this again. And now I'm gonna tell it to treat the RCX register as this structure. This, by the way, symbolizes register. So WinDBG will know clearly that we're referring to the RCX register and not some kind of field that is called RCX from this structure. And now we get a lot of useful information. We can see, for example, the OS major version. That's going to be 0xA. This is hex for decimal 10. Windows 11 is just a marketing name, but actually under the hood, it's still referred to as version 10. And here at the bottom, we can see here, for example, the NT boot path name. We can see here slash window slash. Load options, we can see here boot debug. So we know this is the correct structure. This makes sense. So let's go back up here, and specifically I'm interested in this field over here. This field is called load order list head, and this is a list of the modules that have been loaded by the bootloader. And the first entry of this list is the kernel itself. Afterwards we have a bunch of drivers. So if we take a look at where this starts, this is the address in memory. I'm just going to copy this, and we're going to again save this aside with the echo command. And next thing I want to copy 
is this name over here. We're gonna take a look at this in the React OS code. So let's run here this echo and I'll go back to React OS. Now over here, I'm gonna search this thing I copied over there. That's a load order list head. We're gonna see how this is used and this will help us understand the type of this list. Okay, sweet. Here we can see that this line of code treats the load order list head as this type, LDR data table entry. So we're gonna copy this again. Go back here to Windows Debugger. And this again comes from the Windows kernel. So we're gonna use again DT, NT, exclamation point. And I wanna proceed it with an underscore. And then what we copied from React OS. LDR data table entry. And I'm gonna copy the memory address we copied before. And nice, now we should see the loading entry. And we can see that this is called NTOS kernel.exe. So we know this is the actual kernel and we're looking at the correct structure. And this is the path on disk, which makes entire sense because it does come from system 32. So we know this is the kernel. Now what I want to take from this structure is the DLL base. And this will tell us the address in which this module starts in memory. So we can now run the reload command as we did before but this time with the real address of the Windows kernel in memory. So I'm gonna copy this address over here and I'm gonna use CLS to clear the screen, so .cls. And again, I'm gonna run reload, but this time with slash u. This will unload the module from memory. I'm gonna unload nt, because remember we loaded it into just some random address and not the actual address in memory. And now we're gonna reload it. Again, I'm gonna use slash f for force ntos kernel.exe. And now I'm gonna paste the address we found in the DLL base. And this is the actual address in memory. And now if everything is right, if we take a look at u, which is unassembled, this will disassemble. And then rdx, which is the second argument for this function. Because remember we saw in the React OS code that the second argument is the entry point of the kernel. So if we run this, we expect to see the entry point of the kernel, if everything here is right. Let's see. And indeed RDX points to the KI system startup, which is the entry point of the Windows kernel. Now in practice, how can we actually see that it goes to the Windows kernel? Now thing is that notice as part of these assembly instructions, it goes through the LIDT instruction. And if I put my mouse over here, you can see that LIDT stands for Load Interrupt Descriptor Table Register. Now thing is if we just step here with a debugger, it's gonna crash between this instruction and this instruction. That's because the entire interrupt descriptor table is changed with this command. When you use breakpoints and just step through code with WinDBG, under the hood, it relies on interrupts to do that. And this command will basically screw up the breakpoints that we put. Now you can see this very clearly if I put your breakpoint. So I'm gonna right click here and then insert or remove breakpoint. Now I'm gonna go. Now you can see it's fine, it landed over here and the virtual machine looks fine, it's still booting. But now if I just press here, step over, that's it. If we go here to the virtual machine, it crashed. A critical error has occurred. So I'm gonna press here okay because the machine is in a weird state. So in order to see this in action, to actually see the transition between the bootloader and the kernel, we're gonna need to overrun these instructions with no operation. So I'm gonna just start everything as we did again and go to this point over here. Okay, now I restarted the computer and went to the exact point that we were before we got over this instruction of the LIDT. But this time I don't want to execute this instruction. I wanna continue stepping through this code until it reaches the kernel. So I'm gonna overrun from this address over here in memory. I'm gonna copy this, the address of the LIDT. We're gonna use the fill command for this. That's gonna be F. And by the way, if we need any documentation regarding the commands, this is a great resource over here. This is in the Windows drivers documentation. And here it is, fill memory. And here's how it works. You specify the range over here and then the pattern that you wanna put. So I want this fill command to extend from this instruction over here. We don't want this to happen. Let's go, let's scroll down here. And let's say after this call over here, 
I want just these simple instructions to happen before it actually goes to the kernel with this ret command over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill until this line over here, right after the call. But notice that I'm going to put here minus one because the range here is inclusive. So it includes the end part of this range. Now regarding what I want to fill this memory with, I'm just going to type in 90. And 90 is the machine code of the no operation assembly instruction. So this will just fill this entire memory with the no operation instruction. And now you can see right after this LGDT command, we just have a bunch of nops. And it extends right until here. We have a couple of simple moves, preparation of the stack with a couple of push commands, and finally it returns. And this will go to the kernel. So let's see this. I'm going to put breakpoint right over here. And we're going to press here go. Okay, we're almost there. Now if I just press F10 to step over. And we arrived at the kernel, NTKI system startup. This is a little bonus section for the video. This time I'm going to do this with a physical computer and not just a virtual machine. So we have here the laptop. This is going to be the device that I'm going to debug. And this is going to be the computer that is going to act as the host. We're going to run WinDBG on this one and connect to the laptop. So I'm going to need to configure a couple of stuff. And we're going to just focus here on this screen of the laptop. And I'm here in a command prompt that is running with administrator rights. I'm going to start by running bcd edit slash boot debug. But this time I want to debug the boot manager, which is an even earlier stage as we saw before. So I'm going to write here boot mgr. And then finally on to turn it on. Okay, we can see this is successful. And now I'm just going to configure a couple of settings. This time I'm going to do net debugging and not serial debugging. You can see this line over here. This connects this computer with this laptop. This is an ethernet cable. So they both have static IP addresses. And I'm going to configure this to connect to this. And you can see here I can ping this computer with 192, 168, 1, and then 2. So in this case, I'm going to use BCD edit and then DBG settings. We're going to take a look at some examples with slash question mark. And we're going to use the net example over here for net debugging. Host IP is going to be this IP over here. And port is just going to be 50,000. OK, now we have this key over here. I need to type this key in the WinDBG on this computer. So I'm going to do this right now. OK, now I'm just going to press here OK. I'm going to prepare the debugging over here. And you can see it's now waiting to connect. On this computer, I'm going to run shutdown, slash r, slash t, and then 0. I'm going to reboot the computer. Now I can see it's restarting. OK, now after a couple of seconds, we successfully connected to our target computer. And we landed on the initial breakpoint. This is in the boot manager, debug service. So we successfully connected to the early stage of Windows boot. And that's it. Subscribe for more programming videos, and thanks for watching.